Hey, what's up YouTubers? Orfish here and it's time for my first base tutorial. We will be building a base at the edge of the crater or more commonly known as the void. It's a fairly long tutorial so I tried to cut out most of the running back and forth uh, for resource gathering and such. I put a chapter markers down so you can jump to your favorite content ahead of time. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. We'll start our journey from my previously established base next to the Sea Emperor Leviathan. You probably want to build your void base at what I like to call underwater peninsulas or the extrusions around the crater's edge. That way the far end of your base can reach further into the void. And there just so happens to be one such location nearby, so we're gonna pack up our supplies, some building materials, head over there and establish an outpost. We're gonna be needing some supplies to establish basic storage, fabrication, food supply and a power source. The Seamoth is my preferable transportation method because of its speed and maneuverability. Here you can of course see the star of my previous video, the Sea Emperor Leviathan. Now we're gonna be heading west until we hit the crater's edge and we're gonna follow it until we find our peninsula. Most of you have asked me if I somehow spawned the Sea Emperor Leviathan. No, they just grow up once you hatch them and appear on pre-designated places after a while. One such place is here uh, near the edge of the Grand Reef. And that one, even though it's big, it's not even an adult. It's a juvenile. Now that we've hit the crater's edge, we're gonna head south until we reach our destination. Here you can see lots of free resources, quartz especially, and that's gonna come handy when we start stockpiling our building materials. Now if anyone ever asks me what is the single most important quality that Subnautica base should have, it is of course having as much glass as possible, and Grand Reef is generous when it comes to giving you all the quartz you need to manufacture these huge amounts of glass that we're gonna need. Uh, this spot is also quite unique since it contains this huge drop which still counts as being inside the Grand Reef so you can start building your base uh, without even being subjected to ghost leviathan attacks. Now we're gonna build our storage outpost up here and if you ask me if that is even needed, no. Uh, you can still use your Cyclops as your main remote base for stockpiling resources but honestly I had really no idea how much resources we're gonna spend here so I wanted to have another storage facility just in case. For a start you need one multi-purpose room with a single entrance. Ideally you want to choose the cheapest power source for this kind of outpost and I tried using solar panels of course, but it turned out uh, sunlight can't reach this deep, even though you can trust me it's daytime. Power only. So, Oxygen scratch that. Offline. Let's build other stuff and we'll come back later with enough materials to build some different power source. 
these small lockers you can pack more densely so I use them for my storage compartments. Having fabricator here is of course essential for creating some advanced materials and it, it is primary reason for why you even need power supply in this small outpost. The other one of course is you need oxygen because we're playing in a survival mode. Now we're gonna unload our Seamoth. There's nothing there but some marble melon seeds. And we're gonna construct an interior grow bed and establish a food source right away. Of course I needed to deconstruct some lockers. You need a food source early in a survival mode because it's gonna save you a lot of time. After this is done, we're gonna head back to our previous base and get some more resources so that we can construct a proper power supply. The power supply of choice here is a bioreactor, which is cheap. However, it requires an additional multi-purpose room, just as the nuclear reactor does. We're gonna build that additional multi-purpose room on top of the existing one and we're gonna connect those two with a ladder. The ladder takes up an entire wall so I wanted to relocate my fabricator and free up some space for some additional lockers right next to it. Always turn your console closer to the entrance so that you don't have to walk as much to reach it. A reliable power source is a critical step. Now I know the spade fish isn't the most Consider optimal fuel for our bioreactor, but this will do for now. All primary systems online. Now we can continue structuring this room. We're gonna fill it up with lockers and we're gonna start unloading more resources that we have brought. In these massive storage rooms, you always want to name your locker so you can find your way around better. That is another reason why the small lockers are a better choice in densely packed storage rooms like this one. Now to unload our Seamoth again. Oops, that's the wrong way. And it's time for another round trip. Even though there is a particular landmark nearby, you always want to place a beacon next to your base so that you can navigate better.
As you've probably seen at the beginning of this video, there's a prawn suit parked next to my older base. So we're gonna now use it to make some round trips and gather as much uh, resources from the Grand Reef as possible. The Grand Reef is full of quartz, of course. And we're gonna exploit that heavily so that we don't have to travel a lot to get at least that. This drilling action with brown suit somehow always relaxes me. Mind the ghosts around the Grand Reef, of course. There are two adults, but in your brown suit you're virtually indestructible, so that's not gonna be much of a problem. There are also some quartz deposits near the very edge of the crater, so we'll make sure we don't miss those either. Even though there is an abundance of quartz in the Grand Reef, titanium is not so easily found resource, especially since I've mined most of the nodes for the making of my Sea Emperor Leviathan Observatory base. The closest source of titanium here is probably the crack field, which contains many units of metal salvage as well as some scannable fragments, so we'll head over there. There are two biomes in Subnautica which I particularly hate. Crack field is the first of them, because you can't see anything other than what your light source can see, of course. And without some beacon by which you can orient around, you can easily get lost here. The bone sharks also don't make things any more easier. You can probably hear them eating at my sea mod as we speak. And it needs to be repaired periodically. See, there is some quartz even here, not that we need it anymore, but I just wanted to say that the crack field has many types of resources, even though it's quite an unwelcoming place. As we are approaching the crash zone, I was thinking about sharing with you why I don't like that zone in particular. Here you can't see anything because there is no light. But over there you can't see anything because the distance fog is off the charts. It is too murky and you can't see further than I think few meters away from you. And there is that menacing hall we all well know. Jesus. There is why Subnautica is a scary game. You see, uh, I was talking to you about the Reaper Leviathan, but the Bone Shark jumped me right from the back. Now would be a perfect time to demonstrate to you the power of the Seamod sonar. As you can see, even though it's pitch black, you can see much further and you can spot any threat long before it spots you. Threats like the Reaper Leviathan, for example.
always check your CMOD. And this was just one of the many round trips that I had to undertake to collect enough titanium to start building our void base. At some point you realize it is too inefficient to go all the way to the crack field and back for resource gathering. So what I did is I got back to my primary base and I took my Cyclops with me. I've driven it over the crack field and through the Grand Reef and I've stockpiled it full of titanium which I got alongside the way. You see the storage deck is now full of titanium. I've also brought some seed samples from my primary base and some other items which we'll later use to decorate our void base. This is our storage base after all the gathering round trips have been performed. It took roughly around two and a half hours. Now we're gonna grab some starting resources which we need to build our first few compartments. When playing the survival mode, you need to think about your oxygen supply, so I'm gonna bring CMOD as close to the construction site as possible. Now you've probably seen the final result, and before I started, I already had some rough picture in my head of how this is gonna look. One multi-purpose room was going to be here, and the rest of the base should extend outward into the void. Now you immediately want to start thinking about the orientation of your moon pool. It is somehow predetermined by the orientation of the first module that you build, which in this case was the multi-purpose room. Now if you've seen the final footage, I wanted moon pool to be parallel to the direction of the base instead of perpendicular. Now it takes some trial and error to reset that orientation of your moon pool in relation to your first module. So you need to deconstruct and reconstruct it in a slightly different place. See now it's still perpendicular, so I need to redo the construction. Usually you don't need to perform this step when you can start building your base from the moon pool. However, in this case moon pool was supposed to be much further into the void so there was really no choice. And again.
After a dozen of tries, the orientation is now finally matched and we can start the fun part of the process, which is the actual construction. I imagine this base to be two long pipes extending from the primary multi-purpose room into the void, in between which uh, I can build some other modules like moon pool and living quarters and of course in the end the observatory itself. Usually you want as many of these I and L compartments to be made out of glass as possible. Already here, however, it was obvious that I will need some additional modules on which I will need to build reinforcements, so I left some of them basic. Some of the more critical resources I've put inside the Seamoth cargo. 30 seconds. And here's that oxygen challenge that you need to overcome in order to build your bases in a survival mode. As you've probably guessed, this multi-purpose room will be almost completely covered in reinforcements. Now many of you have asked why is the base floating, as you can see it is not floating but those uh, foundations glitched somehow and you can no longer see those bars, however if I deconstructed and reconstructed some part at the present time those would come back, so it's a glitch. As you can see, things are starting to shape up now, however, we need to go back for additional resources. And here is the purpose of your cargo base. You need somewhere to stockpile your resources close to your construction site, so you don't have to travel back and forth to gather additional resources during the time of your construction. There are gonna be many more glass compartments, so we better put additional reinforcements on the existing modules. Now, even though it looks like it, we still haven't approached the void. See, it's still Grand Reef. And here is the void. And Grand Reef back again. So there's that boundary. Now the challenge is to build the moon pool completely inside the void so that you can experience all those great scenes where the ghost leviathan is right under the moon pool and such. However, you do not want to extend any further into the void than needed to save base hull integrity and resources. Here I've started preparing the corridor to connect the moon pool to it. it looks fine, but let's see. It is obvious at this point that some part of the moon pool will still be inside the Grand Reef, so I need to redo this connection. I need to extend those last compartments a bit further into the void.
and we've reached the failure point again so there's the answer to your question how are my bases holding up like that well it's a constant juggle at the tipping point as you can see I've edited out the round trip during which I had to go back for resources and now it's time to build some foundations now I don't like to think about foundations as a base reinforcements it's a pretty minor addition to a hull integrity however you can build some exterior objects on it like your exterior grow beds and this is a pretty nice place for them to exist so it's a pretty far away from the void and also there will be a glass window on that one slot on my multi-purpose room so it will be a nice view from the inside and this is why not all the eye compartments are made out of glass so that i can put uh, additional reinforcements onto them Now I've come to a conclusion that I need to extend these corridors even further in order for the moon pool to be completely inside the void. As you can see, I've overstayed my welcome inside the void, so ghosts already started chasing me. However, at least at this point, it's easy to make them turn back. Now it's time to construct a moon pool, finally. And the proof of concept is now complete. Now we need a power. Somewhere inside these lockers I've already crafted all the materials that I need for my nuclear reactor. There it is. I have intentionally left this one slot on this multi-purpose room free so that I can build the entrance to the base. Warning. And now it's Emergency time to provide power a power. Only. Oxygen production offline. Here, of course, I realized I forgot some of the resources that I had left inside my Seamoth. Always use at least two reactor rods, one is not gonna get you far. And once you supply your base with power, oxygen is no longer an issue. The view is great, and it's even gonna get better once we plant some kelp outside. A nuclear waste disposal, of course, is one of those things that is needed next to a nuclear reactor.
And now we can start expanding our base further into the void. As you can see, Moon Pool is now completely inside the void, which is what we aimed for. Still no Ghost Leviathans though, I must have triggered it back. Never mind, let's start expanding. As you can see, we can build from the inside out, so we're not gonna expose ourselves to much risk. Oh, there he is. He's probably gonna turn back now. We're gonna add some reinforcements. And on the other side too. Of course, I had to go back for more resources. And this time around, we're gonna build some bulkheads. These are pretty cheap source of your additional hull integrity, so you can use them heavily. Here, of course, it makes perfect sense for them to be anyway. Of course, when you're building, try to make some sense of it. Now, these four bulkheads can lock both the bridges out as a separate compartment. One more, of course. I can hear our friend again. Whoa, there it is. And now we've added sufficient reinforcements, we can continue building. You also want to add some windows to your moon pool. It's one of those buildings that can get extremely dull if you don't decorate it. And it can be extremely beautiful if you do. Here I started measuring and thinking about how many more eye compartments I needed to connect uh, to fit the multi-purpose room in, in between the bridges next. So a few experiments needed to be done. At this point, you're probably not sure if you need another I section before the T section. So you have to try it out. And of course, this configuration is a failure. So we need another I compartment. This one is probably gonna fit. Once we get more resources, of course. Here I wanted to document some glass crafting for you, so that you can get a sense of how much glass you actually need for this kind of base. And I'd say about three to four lockers full of glass, that would be double as much raw quartz.
Each time when you go back for resources, you can eat some so that you don't have to think about food and water during your construction periods. On your way back, you can add some additional reinforcements. And of course, you can take a detour directly through a moon pool. Some modules can't be built from the inside, so we need to take our first dance with a ghost. This one obviously wasn't as risky. And now we can resume building our base. We'll actually continue building from the other side. And once again, we're going to be needing more reinforcements. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at it. At this point, it became obvious that this is going to be a very cool base, right? Here I messed up the placement of the next eye compartment. And that is something you just can't fix from the inside. See? Here you can see that once you start emptying these lockers inside your storage base, you can slowly start to deconstruct them to gain some additional resources. The sea moth was no longer needed at the base entrance, so I brought it in. Here I only built one reinforcement because in the other one I was going to put a water filtering machine. Now we can finish the rest of the windows and now I remembered I brought the glass inside the sea moth. The view was going to be great. Let's create some additional reinforcements. 
on both sides of course more lithium Stepping on the bridge outside the void to make the ghost go away. And now we can fix that mess outside. Welcome aboard, Captain. Here I started thinking, should I leave some space in between the multi-purpose room and the observatory? And there was no other way to find out than to try. Should be okay. more glass. On my return trip I approach the base from the above to have a look at it from that perspective and it turned out to be great. Time to connect these. This particular window was going to determine if I was going to be satisfied with the looks of this bridge, and it turned out to be great. More reinforcements, of course, one at a time, not to overdo it and to save some resources. And now finally the observatory. You never want to construct those at the junction points. You want to separate them from your base by at least one eye compartment so that when you get inside, your base does not obscure your view. This will be the furthest point of our base that stretches into the void. Now, as you can see, the ghost started retreating. It was an unfortunate bug, but they fixed it. Now the biome switches momentarily to observatory, and then it switches right back to the void. 
that is enough to trigger the observatory Zen music, but at the same time it fixes the ghosts so they come right back. Hatch is one of those things you can build from the inside, at some places like this one. And now it's time for another ghost dance. Or we can make them go away and avoid the danger. Okay, this was unfortunate. We will need to construct an additional reinforcements. And unfortunately, the last reinforcement I constructed used up all my remaining lithium. I needed to restockpile the supply. Fortunately, the sea threaders path nearby has an abundance of lithium, so it was a minor inconvenience. You want to minimize these round trips during your construction and of course this was the only one I had to take considering all the other resources that I've gathered were quite enough to build this base from start to finish. Time to build a final set of reinforcements. And you would think the lithium is the only problem with them, but they take a lot of titanium too. Now here I realized I needed more slots on which I can build my reinforcements and I also remember that I plan to build another multi-purpose room on top of the existing one so I needed to do it then so that I can complete building all the reinforcements that I needed. However the ghost came and I seriously underestimated its result. Of course, when they bite you through your reinforced dive suit, they can deal as much damage and you have some time to recoup, so you can endure one bite at least, if not two of those. I plan for the top floor to be mostly glass, and I placed only one reinforcement to the back of the chamber. Another glitch, if you start opening your locker from too far away, so you need to open your menu and close it in order to unglitch yourself. Okay, this is very ill-advised, obviously. I panicked, as you can see.
And that was quite a little adventure outside. See what I meant when I said that the glass makes a great base? The view is just mind-blowing. You also want to build your water filtration machines and your alien containment units early because they remove some of your hull integrity and you don't want any surprises later. Here I realized I have just enough hull integrity for this to hold up and I wanted to place a few Welcome more windows, board, so I needed more reinforcements and I decided to use the bulkheads to do the job. So these are the windows that I wanted to add. And it made sense to me to close up the moon pool using bulkheads and to remove the pair of those from the bridges. This way the moon pool and the multi-purpose room can be sealed tight together. The structure is now complete and what it immediately struck you when you look at it from the outside is that it lacked some lighting. And in my opinion that's another thing that makes a great base. Subnautica in general has great lights so why not use them? People usually make mistake with the floodlights by pointing them away from the base. That makes sense in some situations but here especially it doesn't. There is nothing to see outside the base except the ghosts and they have the bioluminescence so it's redundant. See how the back of our base now looks much better and you can see what a great range the floodlights have in general. Now it's time to light up the front of our base. Two floodlights at the 45 degree angles will do the job. See, already much better. Since we made the ghost go away, let's now use that opportunity to place a spotlight. I like to place those on my observatories. You don't need many of these, I usually place them only on some fun places and they are quite interesting in the sense that they follow the threats outside of your base. And even inside of your base, inside the alien containments. Here I took another sweep to make sure that the floodlight does its job and as you can see it does it very well.
Time to build the second one before more ghosts arrive. And unfortunately out of resources again. Now in case you're wondering why these two lockers appeared out of nowhere, well I took few round trips back to my base and in the meantime I constructed these lockers so that I, uh, they make my resource management inside this base much more efficient, that should have been actually done much sooner. Actually, I need this spot for a fabricator, so one locker should do the trick for now. Time to finish up those floodlights. Okay, again ill-advised. Look at it. Ah, <laughs> that was funny. It was like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you, and then, oh well, never mind. See, this game is evil, I turned my back on it for a moment and it started chasing me right away. Finally the time has come to do some basic furnishing. This also could have been done sooner so that you don't have to take round trips to eat, however that wasn't much of a problem since uh, I had to take round trips to get additional resources anyways. You always want to cover the reinforcements from inside of your base with something, they just look ugly. Here I started thinking what to put inside of this room. Obviously it's gonna be some kind of observation deck. And I imagined it to be like a leisure chamber or something like that. So you're gonna need bed, aquarium, some desk, etc. You always want to check if you can sit on the chair, because sometimes you can't if you just build it too close to your desk. This here is standard furnishing for my, let's say, cafeteria. 
However, this is also a storage room, so this isn't a big base, obviously, and I combined those two inside the same room. I always place a, let's say, kitchen counter and a coffee machine. This bar table is also nice, it is too decorative to be skipped. I always build at least one chair next to it, but you can do more. Try it out, of course. Looks fine. And that was basic furnishing, considering the only thing remaining up here is the bed. I wanted to take another look inside of this room to see if anything is missing or anything is out of place. This aquarium, for instance, could have been placed better. Makes much more sense for it to stand right there. Right across the desk. Now it's time to think about decorations. Usually I just go and place plant pots all around the base before I actually start seeding. Don't mix many types of plant pots inside the same room, it just looks too messy. Here I was thinking if I should place my plant pots in such a way to obscure the window or to place them in between the window and the wall shelf and it turned out to be that this is the better idea since the view is just too good to be obscured. Here there are not so many places at which you can place plant pots. Seek fluid intake. These are the more obvious ones. Of course you want to decorate your glass compartments, be it uh, corridors or even the observatory. Without the decorations those rooms just look too cold and too empty. 
and with them they look great from both inside and outside. You can place some plant pots inside of your observatories, but do it in such a way that they don't obscure your view. You can either place them at your sides or behind your back. If you place them behind your back, they can be a bit taller. Being as elongated as they are, eye compartments are perfect spots on which you can place some benches. You want to admire the view outside, so why not sit while you're doing it? More titanium. Also, it's time to bring some resources back with us because we won't be needing them here anymore. Now here's one curious thing that you need to pay attention to. Those ghost leviathans can bite your seamoth somehow, even though it's inside the moon. See, this one al almost got destroyed. I haven't seen this anywhere else, and uh, honestly, I have no idea why it's happening here. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. Now seems like a good time to bring the microscope in. And this is why I brought the Cyclops with additional titanium, because those round trips to the crack field alone just weren't enough. You need at least 10 lockers full of titanium to build the base at this scale. On my way back I built one locker inside our reactor room. I like to place some spare reactor rods inside of it. This room, of course, needs some love, too. And wall planters are also a good idea. They are decorative by themselves, even if you don't plant anything inside of them. Looks good. Let's resume the corridor furnishing. Okay, this was a terrible idea.
I'm obviously gonna do this in all T compartments. Now to the other side. And finally. This still looks empty and more benches would be nice. More titanium, but first... Let's unload that microscope. On our way back, we can place exterior grow beds and we can plant something inside soon so that it can grow up by the time we finish our base. This time I brought some marble melon seeds so the food will no longer be a concern. You always want your trash can next to your interior grow bed so that you can dispose of any excess seeds that you encounter. More nuclear rods is never a bad thing. Let's finish up these. bench and the plant pot are too close together so it makes the movement 
in between them difficult. I'm gonna relocate the benches. Let's do one control sweep. Also, let's reorganize the storage. I'm gonna make two small ones instead of one big one. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Finally, it's seeding time. I like to place one kelp, one blood root. 8 deep shrooms, 4 acid mushrooms and 4 gel sacks in each of the exterior grow beds. We'll leave them like that for now. Time to furnish and decorate the moon pool. I like to place one locker at the entrance so that I can keep the gadgets that I need outside of my base here. Time to seed the rest of the indoor plants. The Ming plant has some calming vibe to it, so I like to use it inside the bedrooms. Lantern fruit, of course, is never a bad option. Chinese potato will do just fine here at the kitchen. Now, I've never tried this out. I wanted to place bulbo trees at the entrance to the observatory. That way, when you approach the observatory, you get some jungly feeling. These three I don't find particularly interesting, so I use them on occasion. Here I decided to use all of them for no particular reason.
we're gonna place some wall planters first and then we're gonna seed the small plants afterwards. Copper is one of those things you can never get enough when it comes to placing signs and picture frames. So you usually need at least two lockers full of copper wires and twice as much full of raw copper ore. As you can see I also stockpiled copper inside of my storage base and I have taken it with me into the cyclops so that I can process it into some copper wires. Surprisingly, you can find some copper ore nodes around the Grand Reef and if you run out of those, there are many more in the Blood Kelp Trench. Like I said, you always want to cover your reinforcements from inside the base because they just look too ugly. Picture frames will do just fine here. Let's move this a bit back to the wall. And now we can start placing signs. Signs are one of those things that makes your base sophisticated. See, at first I had no idea what to write there. And finally I settle for the observatory because that's just what it is. Now I decided to place more signs but only inside the corridors. So that when you 
enter the corridor, you know exactly where you have to go to reach your destination. See, the moon pool just doesn't like the signs, they tend to float. No matter where you place them. Now let's mirror the other side. More wires. Still can't cut these. This place here is also missing some signs. These I can replant actually. The mink plant too. This 
this fellow as well. And the umbrella thing. Oops, forgot to decorate the moon pool. We'll do it now. More titanium. Luckily, we have some. These are fully grown now, so we can replant those. I'm missing more green inside of this room. Let's place some vault planters. Here too. I really have no idea why I didn't bring all the titanium. Time to replant these. There's that lich again. So eight of these. Four acids. And four gel sacks. come back later to finish this up. Finally I can make a fiber mesh.
And let's grab some fish to put inside the aquarium. I always like to pick those that are native to the biome. Two spades, two bladder fish, two spine fish and two peepers. I actually tried to chase the fish school, lol. It's interesting, you can't see the peepers as easily with their eyes shut. Alright, we're back. Time to finally build a bed and to fill up the aquarium. I can also replant the lantern fruit now. And now the small plants. I also brought some seeds inside the cyclops. These will do just fine here. This came very handy during the presentation video. Let's finally reorganize the storage. Some more copper wires for the signs. Well, I guess this makes as much sense as anything else. Having this console also adds some depth to the moon pool.
time to plant these, not that I like them very much. During my round trips back I always took something away from this base and it's now time to close it for good. Warning, emergency power only. All the remaining resources are now ready inside the Cyclops for the making of my next base. Let's finish this up. Some more deep shrooms. Replant these. To the other corridor. More variety to the moon pool. See the knife started glitching my HUD. These will fit just fine inside the moon pool as well. Forgot about these picture frames also. I went outside to take some pictures for the frames and while I'm outside I wanted to take another close look around the base to see if everything is okay. Everything seems just fine here as well. Also in moon pool. And let's set these pictures finally. This room is looking great as well, but I forgot about those plant pots and mean plant will fit just fine there. One more look from the above and I think we're done. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. You can also download the game save by following the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video.